This video is covering the kidneys and urine formation. It's a summary video, an overview of the urinary system geared towards leaving cert biology and it might help you with your revision. So the urinary system, its main feature are those kidneys, but this diagram features often on exam papers where you're asked to label all of these parts. But let's deal with the kidneys. Where are the kidneys located? In the abdominal cavity and each kidney is protected by a layer of fat. Each kidney is linked to the bladder by a tube known as the urethra. It's composed of muscles, so it can undergo or perform peristalsis, muscular contraction. The bladder is a muscular bag that stores urine, and when urine is ready to exit the body, it leaves through the urethra, and this is controlled by two sphincter muscles. Micturition is the release of urine. Next, move on to the kidney structure. Diagrams are so important in leaving cert biology, in this chapter particularly. So you must be able to draw and label a good diagram of the kidney. There are three labels that you should be able to place on your diagram. The first is the cortex. Think of the edges or the corners. Then you have the medulla or the medullary pyramids. And then you have the renal pelvis, often forgotten. So really three is the magic number and the renal pelvis is the one label that students often forget. But there is one additional label that's rarely forgotten and that is the urethra. Always add in the urethra as well. Blood supply to the kidney is essential. If you don't understand the blood supply to the kidney, you don't understand urine formation. So blood enters each kidney through the renal artery and the renal artery is branching directly off the aorta and the blood in the renal artery contains waste, very important. Blood flow out of the kidney is in the renal vein. This is filtered blood. There's no waste and it's going to link directly with the vena cava. So let's list some functions of the kidneys. Number one, excretion, the removal of metabolic waste. Number two, the kidneys regulate blood pressure by controlling blood volume. And number three, the kidneys control the production of red blood cells. And this is all linked to the production of a particular hormone. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. That's a very important statement. A nephron is this tubule that's found within the kidney. In fact, there are approximately one million nephrons inside each kidney. These nephrons are tubules, tiny tubules covered in blood capillaries. Nephron structure is essential to your information and understanding it. So be able to draw a nephron and label it. Start with Bowman's capsule. Then it's the proximal convoluted tubule. This leads you on to the loop of Henle, which has a descending limb, a going down limb. Then around the bend, it is still the loop of Henle and you have the ascending limb, which is the going upwards limb. Leading on from the loop of Henle is the distal convoluted tubule, which leads into the collecting duct. Positioned within the Bowman's capsule is the glomerulus, a ball of capillaries. Each kidney has approximately one million nephrons. A nephron is the functional unit of the kidney where blood is filtered and metabolic waste is removed. The waste product produced is urine and knowing all the parts of the nephron is essential to your information and understanding it. The glomerulus sits in Bowman's capsule and the blood flow into the glomerulus is from the afferent arteriole. This blood was once in the renal artery. Blood flow out of the glomerulus is in the narrower efferent arteriole. It's narrower than the afferent arteriole and it leads into the renal vein eventually. So here's an alternative diagram of the nephron a bit more complex because it shows the blood supply. So we have the afferent arteriole, which leads into the glomerulus, and that's sitting within Bowman's capsule. Then we have the efferent arteriole. From Bowman's capsule, we go into the proximal convoluted tubule, which then leads down into the loop of Henle. One side is the descending limb, go around the bend, and you have the ascending limb, which will then lead into the distal convoluted tubule. Then we have the distal convoluted tubule which leads into the collecting duct and look at all those other branches on the collecting duct because other nephrons will feed into the same collecting duct. So if you compare the two diagrams, ours is more simplified but it has exactly the same labels and the reason for using the simplified diagram is just to help you learn the labels and to learn the processes. When you know the structure of the nephron, it's important that you can note the position of the nephron parts in the kidney. Are they in the cortex or are they in the medulla? Why? Because in the leaving cert, the questions often ask where in the kidney does filtration take place or where in the kidney does reabsorption take place. So this diagram is very important. When you know the structure of the nephron and the kidney, move on to urine formation. There are three stages or three processes involved in urine formation. Number one, filtration. 
two reabsorption, three secretion. And at the end of these three processes, urine is formed. It's mostly water and contains salts and urea also. Urea is made in the liver and it's made when excess amino acids are processed. This is called deamination. So know that urea is classed as nitrogenous waste, nitrogen containing waste. It's made in the liver, but it's excreted in urine. Stage one or step one in urine formation is filtration. Filtration takes place in the glomerulus and the glomerulus is surrounded by Bowman's capsule. So that's a very important statement. Filtration takes place in the glomerulus, which is surrounded by Bowman's capsule. It's classed as ultra filtration or very fine filtration. Only very small molecules, those small enough to fit through the fenestrations or the pores in the glomerulus, pass into the nephron. And the glomerulus design facilitates this. It's beyond the scope of our course, but it's very interesting. The glomerular capillaries are very porous, note that. But it's also the high blood pressure due to the narrowed efferent arterioles. They're narrower than the afferent arterioles. This helps the process. Just to note as well that filtration is taking place in the cortex of the kidney. So what gets filtered? Well, water, glucose, salts, amino acids, hormones and urea are some of the substances that pass into the nephron and form glomerular filtrate. But more importantly, what does not form glomerular filtrate? Blood cells, platelets, large plasma proteins are too big and do not get filtered. They do not form glomerular filtrate. Step two in urine formation is reabsorption, often referred to as selective reabsorption because a lot of good material, non-waste material was filtered and now needs to be returned to the blood. Most reabsorption takes place at the proximal convoluted tubule with some at the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. But the proximal convoluted tubule is key. So most reabsorption immediately takes place at the proximal convoluted tubule all of the glucose, all the amino acids, a high percentage of the water and a high percentage of the salt is reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule. What are the processes involved in reabsorption? Well, it's a combination mostly of active transport and diffusion and that water is reabsorbed by osmosis. So it's important that you know active transport and diffusion is mostly responsible with osmosis responsible for the movement of water. So with most reabsorption now complete at the proximal convoluted tubule, we just have to deal with fine tuning. The descending limb of the loop of Henle is where more water is reabsorbed by osmosis and only water on the descending limb. The ascending limb of the loop of Henle deals with the reabsorption of salt. So salt is reabsorbed by diffusion down near the bottom of the loop of Henle and then at the top of the ascending limb, salt is reabsorbed by active transport. From the loop of Henle, we reach the distal convoluted tubule. More reabsorption can take place here under certain conditions. For example, more salt can be reabsorbed by active transport, but that's under the control of a particular hormone and only happens if required. In the distal convoluted tubule, there is little to no water reabsorbed. It's largely impermeable to water. However, if water needs to be conserved, if the body needs to reabsorb more water, a hormone, ADH, can make the walls of the distal convoluted tubule more permeable to water, resulting in more water being reabsorbed. So this hormone can change the permeability of the walls of the distal convoluted tubule. ADH is known as antidiuretic hormone. It's made in the hypothalamus, but it's secreted by the pituitary gland and these are found in the brain. So there's the hypothalamus, that's where ADH is made and then it's sent to the pituitary gland and from the pituitary gland, when it's needed, it's secreted into the blood and travels to the nephron. From the distal convoluted tubule, we reach the collecting duct and here more salts and water can be reabsorbed. However, this is under hormonal control. And when we're discussing the reabsorption of water, it's ADH. That's the hormone that controls the reabsorption of water in the collecting duct and the distal convoluted tubule. The third and final stage in urine formation is secretion. This takes place at the distal convoluted tubule where substances are moved from the blood into the nephron. So they're actually moving in the opposite way from the blood into the nephron. We need to get rid of them. And many substances are secreted, for example, drugs, but particular ions, potassium ions and hydrogen ions are secreted. Hydrogen ions are secreted to regulate blood pH. Very important. 
Your information involved three stages, filtration, reabsorption and secretion. And the substance that passes out of the collecting duct is now urine. Urine will eventually make its way to the renal pelvis. And from the renal pelvis, it will pass out of the kidney in those muscular tubes, the urethers, one from each kidney. The urine is stored in the bladder, which is a muscular bag, and eventually will leave the bladder or exit the body through the urethra. And the urethra has two sphincter muscles that control the release of urine. So when you feel comfortable with all this detail, go on and look at the adaptations of the nephron. For example, what makes the proximal convoluted tubule so well adapted to its role for reabsorption? Here's a hint, the presence of microvilli and lots of mitochondria. There are other videos, but you have your textbook. Have a read of that. It's really, really good. Make sure you're doing past papers and checking the official marking schemes. The best of luck.